Hey everybody, what's up? I am Jason C from the Mash and Drum. How's everybody doing? Just uh, checking out my uh, the chat here. See uh, who's gonna come in before we get started. Hey, hey everybody, what's up? Hey. I'm Jason C from the Mash. And Drum. Hey, uh, shenanigans. How you doing, buddy? Uh, welcome. Thanks for joining in. I uh, appreciate it. Uh, this is my first uh, kind of live stream doing on my own here, but I'm really excited. Um, hey, how you doing, Scott? Nice to see you, buddy. Thanks for thanks for jumping in. Um, I want to show you guys a couple uh, cool stuff um, that I got. Um, Scotty knows about this, so I got some uh, I got some shirts made for Mash and Drum with my logo on it, which I'm really excited about. Um, Gonna see how people like them. Maybe I'll uh, start selling them at some point. I think it's a pretty cool uh, logo. Um, uh, hoping people get into it. Hey, how you doing, Dwayne? I see you in there. Uh, I see you just popped up in the chat. Um, so, so I I was kind of bored on Sunday. Didn't really know what to do. So uh, I uh, I'm I'm in Ohio, so I'm only about two hours away from uh, Kentucky. So I drove through Cincinnati. Um, went through Kentucky and um, I kind of stopped and got some stuff because there are some things there that I've never tried that you can only get in Kentucky, just like uh, this guy, the Heaven Hill Bottled and Bond Bourbon, which I've heard so many great things about, especially for the price. I mean, this, it's like 15 bucks, it's amazing. So um, I wanted to crack this open and share uh, my thoughts with you guys uh, here live. And also, uh, you know, maybe take any questions um, also, what I want to kind of talk about also is, um, so I'm going to be doing kind of my version of a uh, of a blind uh, flight um, on camera. It'll it'll be a video that I'll that I'll have available, but it's going to be my favorite bottled and bond uh, bourbons. So it's going to be four of them. So I'm pitting against, um, let's see, so it'll be Colonel Taylor, um, small batch, um, Evan Williams bottled and bond, um, early times bottled and bond. And um, the fourth one, depending on how this goes, uh, let's see, the fourth one I think I'm going to do, oh, of course, is uh, Henry McKenna. So those will be, those will be my, my, new, my new ones, or uh, well, my, my four that I'm going to pit against each other, and we'll see how it goes blindly. I, I kind of feel like I know what I'm going to pick, but you never know until you go. So um, let's see, did I pick up New Riff? No, not yet, buddy. I didn't see it in any of the stores that I went to. Um, it's coming to Ohio actually in September, so uh, it's part of the distribution here. So I'll have my eye on that. I'm definitely going to grab that and um, and review it. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, Dwayne, I agree. The bottom and bond bourbons are just such good value. Um, I, I can't I can't say enough about it. Um, another one I'm going to try here with you guys is uh, this one too that I picked up. This is the old Bardstown bottled and bond that I figured was sitting there. I figured I'd try that. Another great price. This was only like 17 bucks too. It was amazing. Um, and then I picked up this beauty. Um, so this is the 1792 foolproof. Um, they were joking around with me with this came from the collapse collection, but I highly doubt it. Uh, but it was also a pick. So I grabbed it. Uh, it was only 50 bucks. So I figured I'd grab it. I never tried the foolproof. I've only ever had the uh, small batch and the bottle and bond version, which was good. I'm really excited for the foolproof because Jason likes his uh, foolproof whiskeys, foolproof bourbons too. Um, let's see. Uh, all right. So I guess um, as we're talking about the bottled and bond bourbons, let me know in the chat what you, uh, what your favorite bottled and bonds are. Um, as I'm gonna crack into this right now and see what we get. So I'm very excited here. What do we always say? Generous poor. That's right. <laughs> All right, here we go. Oh, also I have my shirts in white too. <laughs> so came out pretty good. Yeah, uh, bourbon shenanigans. Yeah, 1792, the uh, the full proof. I, I grabbed it as soon as I saw it. I had never seen it around here, so I had to grab it. Um, yeah, the full proof. Can't wait. And um, so this is now the, uh, as I mentioned, the Heaven Hill Bottle and Bond. Um, it's a really, really super light color, almost, uh, you know, very honey-like, um, kind of golden. It's really, really nice looking bourbon. It's actually got some good viscosity to it too. It's kind of sticking to the glass. 
so the guys can see it. Oh, you can kind of see a little bit. See it kind of stick in there, see the legs a little bit. It's got some good viscosity to it. Um, let's see. Hey, Whiskey Throttle, I saw you just came in. Thanks for joining, buddy. Appreciate it. Um, okay, so let's get into the nose a little bit um, and see what we got on this bourbon. I cannot wait. Let's see. Woo! Well, it's definitely uh, a bit alcohol forward. Um, really cool. Uh, let's see. Um, so bottle and bond, as you guys know, as most everybody knows, you know, one distillation season, that's January through December. Uh, it's gotta be a late age, at least four years, hundred proof, uh, federally bonded warehouse. Uh, the thing that this, that everyone says is so cool is this is actually uh, six years, uh, not just four. So you get two extra years of maturation, which is great. Um, press man, Henry McKenna is the only bottle and bond I've cracked. Uh, you got to get some more, buddy. It's uh, there's some good ones out there. All right, so now the alcohol is kind of uh, dissipated a little bit. So you really get the sweetness of the corn on it. There's a really good corn note to it. Then you're getting those those usual vanilla, the caramel. There's definitely an oakiness to it. You can you could smell the uh, the oak in there. Definitely a good nuttiness to it as well. Hmm. But really, that uh, the corn, the corn is really punching through. You know what makes it sweet? It's really good, and the vanilla is really punching through too. All right, guys, cheers. Let's uh, let's let's try it out. Mmm. All right. So immediately, it's ooh. There's <laughs> I just got a I just got a taste of apple in there. Very um. Very unique, very cool. But I mean, up front, it's it's all corn, caramel, vanilla, those usual bourbon notes. But the uh, the finish is long. Um, let me uh, let me go in for that second sip that I love to do. Oh yeah. Kind of now now I'm getting cinnamon, peanuts. I think I'm getting like a walnut too. It's pretty crazy. Wow, I can't believe this stuff is 15 bucks. It's so, it's got so much depth to it and the finish just keeps going. It's really, really good. Uh, let's see here. Um, yes, yeah, Scott, it, it, is, uh, it is classic, uh, nutty classic for Heaven Hill. That's true. Um, Richard is sipping on some Colonel Taylor Bottle and Bond small batch. Cheers from LA, California. Cheers, buddy. Thanks for joining in. Um, yeah, so, so Colonel Taylor, Colonel Taylor is the one I think I'm going to pick when I do the kind of blind shootout here. Um, it's always just been one of my favorites. I love it. Um, but Henry McKenna, I, I feel like that one I may pick. Uh, the early times, if no one has had that one. Um, where's that bottle? Um, <clears throat> I don't know if anyone's seen the uh, early times bottled and bond. This is also a great buy. Um, it's only like 20 bucks. And this is the same mash bill as the infamous King of Kentucky uh, bourbon um, that, uh, that I think is that retail for about 200. I've been seeing it for like $800 in the secondary. Pretty crazy. But this stuff is really good juice in here. Uh, if you find it, highly recommend it. So this one will be in the uh, battle as well. Hey, what's up, Malton in Montreal? How you doing, buddy? Nice to see you, Swam. Um, let's see. Swami is sipping on some syrup. All right. <laughs> Very nice. So for those of you guys that just joined, I uh, just opened some um, Heaven Hill Bottle and Bond, which I just grabbed uh, over the weekend, which I've never tried, only available in Kentucky. So I was really psyched about it. So I'm sipping on that now. Um. Mm. Yeah, so as I mentioned to you guys, and I'm still getting all those flavors. I mean, caramel, oak, apple, cinnamon. I'm getting that nuttiness, that typical um, Heaven Hill nuttiness to it. And then the finish, the finish just keeps going with, uh, it's really, really cinnamony and nutty on the back end. It just keeps kind of going down. It's really, really good. I love it. 
Um, let's see what's going on in the uh, – let's see. About the EH tail, small batch, single barrel, and rye, but haven't cracked them. Uh, press man, um, I've had the single barrel before. The um, So the bottles can get a little tricky with the single barrel. As you know, with any single barrel, it can be – it can really be hit or miss. I've even had some strange tasting bottles of McKenna that I haven't been that happy with. Uh, for the most part, I think like seven out of 10 are really you know exceptional and that really good Henry McKenna flavor that we all love. But every now and then you kind of get a weird one. Uh, and the same thing goes for the Colonel Taylor single barrel. I've had some really, really good ones. And I've had, um, I've had like one or two stinkers. I have a bottle of the uh, single barrel um, up there as well, and I still haven't cracked it yet. I'm, I guess it's one of those things I think I'm a little scared because I'm, oh man, I hope it's not a bad one because when you see it, you kind of have to grab it. So let's see here. Oh, this is great. This is so good. I can't believe this is only 15 bucks. I could sip this all day. I should have bought a case of this stuff. My goodness. So good. Uh, let's see. Um, Montreal. Nope, he's kidding. He's just drinking some Canadian Club Chairman Select. Nice. <laughs> Very cool. What's the uh, what's the proof on that, Swan? I can't remember off offhand. Um, let's see. Press I only see the 80 proof Heaven Hill in early times around me. Yeah, actually, um, I grabbed. I grabbed. Uh, I grabbed this one too, the green label, while I was there. Um, I'm all that's uh, 80 proof. Okay. Yeah, I grabbed the uh, the green label while I was there as well. Um, I kind of went crazy. I just started just grabbing bottles. I also bought this guy. So this is the uh, this is the Henry McKenna bottle and bond that we all know and love, and then this is the Henry McKenna sour mash, kind of like a classic bottle. Um, I hadn't seen this, so I grabbed it. So this guy is um, 80 proof as well, 40% alcohol. So it's a sour mash. So they just keep using that same um, that same process to keep making this. So I'm really curious how this is going to taste as well. Yeah, I've heard the uh, I've heard the green label is uh, is good too. Um, Yes, yeah, Scott, I'm not sure if uh, if I'll be going back there. <laughs> uh, Swami, that's 100% rye whiskey. Oh, good. Um, I guess in the chat, let me know um, who here is really into uh, bourbons, rye. What are some of your favorite rye? Is rye is something that I got into a little bit later on in the game uh, past uh, once I started with bourbon. I was really into bourbon, and then I started trying some rye. And I've had some amazing rye whiskeys. Um, uh, I love the Rittenhouse, the Rittenhouse rye. Um, I feel like Knob Creek single, the Knob Creek rye is a pretty good buy. Um, but that Rittenhouse rye for 25 bucks, the Bottle and Bond one is, is delicious. It's a great buy. I love it. Um, so let's see. Let's go back here. That's <laughs> why I like everything brown. Yeah, good call, buddy. Good job. Good stuff. Uh, Press man sipping on High West Burai. Um, first High West product for me. Also bought the Rendezvous Rye. So the Rendezvous Rye was one of the uh, was one of the last ryes I had. I really liked it. I thought it was good. It was a uh, definitely good blend. Um, Bourbon Shining is. Have you had any of the Corsair? I have. I had the Corsair, the Rye Mageddon, and I've also had the uh, the Peat Smoke one, which was really interesting. I probably should have gave that a better try because I um, I tried the peat smoked uh, Corsair whiskey after I was trying a couple of other bourbons ones and it just kind of knocked me on my ass. It was pretty funny. Um, that's right, except Dalmore. Yeah, good call. Um, for those of you guys who joined in late, I want to show you this. I got um, I had some T-shirts made with my logo on it. Um, I'm thinking of having these, uh, maybe put these up for sale if uh, everyone kind of likes the logo and, watch and wants one. It has my little, uh, it has my little, um, my little toast on it. It's not about the whiskey, it's the people you share it with, which is what I like to do. So, 
Yeah, bourbon shenanigans. I've heard about the O Rage. That's one I have to get my hands on and try that. Uh, it's good stuff. I'm. I'll definitely love. I definitely love that stuff. Um, oh, bourbon shenanigans. I'll advertise it for you. Yeah, it'd be great. <laughs> Any help is appreciated. Um, so now what we're gonna do? Well, we have the Heaven Hill. Um, now we're gonna jump into the Old Bartstown bottled and bond, um, which is a Willet product. So it's weird. I, I haven't. There's not a lot of. There's not a ton of Willets that I love. Um, uh, but this one, um, I heard really good things about, so I figured I'd pick it up. Um, let's see, Richard, still love Knob Creek Rye. Russell's Reserve is my go-to. Oh, Russell's Reserve Rye. That's one I need to try. I've heard good things about the Russell's Reserve Rye. That's right. Uh, yeah, I'm with you on the Knob Creek Rye. I love it. Um, Pressman, yes, Whistle Pig 10-Year Rye um, is great. I love it. Um, I mean... Could be a little bit overpriced, as many of the whistle pig things are. Uh, I did a review of the the old world cask uh, edition, the old world finish. I don't know if you guys saw that one, but it was um, it was you know definitely a little sweet for my taste. Definitely not worth the price. Um, I'd rather drink the written house, but I did like the whistle pig ten year over the old world finish because I just felt like you were getting better bang for your buck. You're getting those classic rye notes. I really liked that a lot. So. Got a fresh glass here. So let's go with the old Bartstown. Let's see how this one is. <laughs> Everyone just likes to drink the brown stuff. All right. So old Bartstown. Now Willow product. Also bottled and bond. So I have my little theme here. So uh, let's see how they go against each other. I still have a little bit left in here. But I'm going to try the old Bartstown first, see how that works out. So the old Bartstown is much sweeter on the nose. Uh, on the the Heaven Hill, I got way more alcohol up front, um, and it was it was kind of punching me in the face. This one starts off sweet right away. This one has a ton of uh, apple scent to it, apple and caramel, like a caramel apple. Um, really good. All right, not getting. Got some cinnamon in there. It's kind of, it's very desserty. Hmm. Really good. Man, this just keeps going with, uh, there's a, there's a tiny bit of nuttiness in there, but not nearly as much as the Heaven Hill. This is way sweeter. All right, let's cheers everybody. Let's, uh, let's go in for this one. Whoa, very different. Wow, what a difference a, uh, what a, difference a, a, a distillery makes. <laughs> so this one is way more fruit forward, to me at least. Um, you do get a little bit of the corn, but you get... Wow, you get a very strong, sweet, candy apple finish on this. I mean, it is candy. It's really good. Um, not much oak. You don't, you're not really getting those, those deep flavors. And the finish is definitely not nearly as long as the Heaven Hill. Hmm. Really good. Very, very fruit forward. A little bit sour, I think. But definitely very good. I mean, it's definitely on the sweeter side. It's more of a corn, apple, really strong apple flavor on it. Uh, maybe even a little bit of peach to me um, that's coming through. Really good. Mm. Yeah, very peaches and cream and very uh, so different. I mean, these two bottles... Uh, both bottle and bond, two different distilleries, and the flavor profiles couldn't be any different. And I love that. That's what I love about bourbon and exploring those flavors. So good. Let's see what you guys are saying here. Uh, Pressman, love the wait, Peter White. Oh, welcome. I don't think I saw you yet, uh, Peter. Um, Family Reserve 16 year rye from Alberta Distilleries is incredible. Hook Statters. 
from Alberta, Canada. Hmm. Never even heard of that one, buddy. 123.8 proof, though. That sounds uh, right up my alley, though. I can't complain about that. Um, Peter, tell me more about that. Um, tell me more about that. That Hawkstaters Family Reserve. Do they they make anything else besides the rise? Um, let's see. Pressman loves that Michter's Barrel Proof Rye. I have not had that yet. I have a hard time finding Michter's around here, unfortunately, and I do like a lot of their stuff. Um, the US one American whiskey is just delicious. That is just vanilla cream all day. It's so good. Um, but I do, uh, I do enjoy the regular bourbon, but I think I like the American whiskey even better. The rye is a solid rye too, but their Michter's 10 year, um, which I haven't had the opportunity to try yet. Um, and the, I did have a taste of uh, the Michter's, uh, one of the anniversary editions, which was pretty delicious too. Um, let's see here. Uh, yes, I traded in, uh, let's see. Old Force of Bottom Offer one. Oh, cool. Cooper Spirits bottled in Philly. Oh, interesting. Going back in the uh, for the bars down here. Wow. So good. So good. It's definitely a lot more fruity. Um, I mean, for me, I would probably take this guy over this guy. But it is a, it's a damn fine bourbon. Um, it's definitely got a place. Uh, it's definitely among the sweeter bourbons. This would probably be really good with a, like, even as a mixer, bring out those fruit flavors. Um, but the, uh, this one, I think for me, has everything you want in a bourbon. It's got, it's got the vanilla, the caramel, the oak, the nuttiness. It's got a little bit of apple in it, cinnamon, clove. When you, and the finish is long. It gives you that burn. You don't really get that at the Bardstown, considering it's a uh, hundred proof. It's a, uh, it's really smooth and really sweet, but equally, uh, but very enjoyable. Let's see here. Um, you got a winner with E. H. Taylor Rye, hard to find. Didn't like Rittenhouse. Oh, Richie didn't like the Rittenhouse. Yeah, I happen to really like the Rittenhouse a lot, but I haven't had the Russell's Reserve single barrel rye either. Um, the E.H. Taylor Rye, um, that's one that I haven't tried either yet. It's, uh, hard to come by, as you mentioned. Um, uh, what's everyone's kind of overall, anyone who's, who's had the E.H. Taylor Rye, um, how do you feel like that one is? It's, uh, E.H. Taylor Rye is great, down to one old open bottle. Okay. Is the E.H. Taylor Rye, um, is it more on the spicy side or sweeter side? Let me know in the chat. Or I'm going back to the uh, I'm going back to the Heaven Hill. Mm, so good, I love it. Really, really good stuff. Mm. Yeah, I mean it's got it's got so much flavor for a fifteen dollar bottle. It's just kind of crazy. Um, uh, I did want to revisit um, the, um, let's see, my, uh, my review on the Calumet that I did. So I was curious if anyone had ever seen uh, this bottle in their area, the Calumet 12, or even the 10 or the small batch. Um, Richard Blancas, yes, Kentucky Hug, exactly. You definitely get the Kentucky Hug from the Heaven Hill. But you don't really get it with the, uh, with the old Bardstown, that's for sure. Uh, Peter White, E.H. Taylor Rye has no corn on rye and barley. Oh, okay. So it's probably pretty spiky. That sounds good. I'll take that. Mmm, that was good. Really, really good. So, so with this bottle, I don't know if, uh, if you guys, if you guys have saw my uh, review, it's such a shame. I was so upset because obviously I spent about 70 bucks on this bottle. Um, and it's, it's so good up front, but then on the back end, it just, it just goes so bitter and dry. It just kills it. 
Um, I think the ten year was was more. Uh, the ten year had more uh, had more balance to me. That I didn't get that crazy finish on it at all. Drain pour it. Yeah, <laughs> I think I'm going to use this as a mixer. Actually. <laughs> So here's something else that I picked up while I was in Kentucky, the good old mellow corn, <laughs> which I've seen a lot of people do some reviews on. Um, this is just 100% corn whiskey, but it's bottled and bond. Um, what do you think? You guys think I should uh, open this and try this right now? What do you think? Let's see, what about Heaven Hill Bottle and Bond versus Evan William Bottle and Bond, which is always in my bar? Yes. Yes, Peter, and here it is right here. I love this stuff. This is why it's going to be in my, um, in my showdown on my next video that I'm going to make. Um, for those of you who, who joined a little bit late and didn't hear me, um, I'm going to be pitting uh, Evan Williams uh, Bottle and Bond bourbon all bottle and bonds, four of them. So Evan Williams versus Henry McKenna versus E.H. Uh, e. Taylor versus Early Times. Because it's four of my favorites. I'm going to pit those four against each other kind of blindly and taste them and see which one comes out on top. Uh, yes on the mellow corn. All right. Ever tried, let's see, ever tried Bird Dog 10-year? Love the mellow corn yeah, bottle and bond personally. All right. I guess I'm going to do it. So let's uh, let's check it out. This is exciting. I love doing this stuff. All right. Let me get a clean glass. All right. Uh, Bird Dog Tenure. No, Richard. I have not tried it. Um, I see it in the store all the time. <laughs> um, I know they just did a review of the – I saw a review of the of the small batch that they did. That was pretty good. Uh, how's the Tenure? Let me know. Um, I've heard good things about it. All right, guys, here we go. We're going in on the mellow corn. Woo! Okay, here we go. All right. Wow, that is light. All right, guys, ready for this one? This is like, uh, it's like champagne. Look at that. But it's got some body to it, I gotta say. So that is like champagne, super, super, super light, uh, super light syrup color. I mean, it is really good. Look at that. Really cool. All right. Uh, let's see. What do we got here? Less than $10 by me. Whoa, that's crazy. Yeah, I got, I got this for like 12 bucks. I saw it. I think it's the awful cheesy label, but it's so nostalgic. I love it. It kind of had to have it on the bar. Um, so cool. Um, let's see, mellow corn for twelve dollars here in Indiana. Nice coin, yeah. Um, so apparently it's Calumet in a bird dog bottle. Yes, 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 Scott. That's what I found out. It's so bird dog, um, which is notorious for making all of their flavored whiskeys. Um, so all their so Calumet, which I had pulled out earlier back there, that is their. Um, Right over there, right there. So the Calumet is the kind of premium version or the premium line for uh, Bird Dog. So uh, Richard Marcus goes good with Fritos. <laughs> I would imagine so. All right, so let's get into the nose here for the mellow corn. <laughs> well, now, thanks, Richard, because now all I have is Fritos in my damn head. <laughs> and that's why I smell is Fritos. <laughs> all right yeah i mean it's very sweet on the nose it's you know the alcohol is punching through it is 100 proof really good stuff mm. it's just all sweet goodness fritos <laughs> and uh mm, very good all right let's have a cheer let's have a uh, cheers again here we go guys Whoa. 
If I say that's corny, is that a, is that a good tasting note? Because it's very corny. <laughs> it is just corn and sweetness and mm. Take care, uh, Bourbon Shenanigans. Nice seeing you, buddy. Thanks. Mm, that's good. Wow. For like 12 bucks? This is great. This is great whiskey. Mm. Straight corn. It's sweet. It's got a long finish to it. I mean, there's not much depth of flavor going on, but for a sipper, that is really good stuff. Let's see, uh, <laughs> spike corn pudding. Yeah, absolutely. This would be, uh, my goodness. You'd probably do some dangerous things in the kitchen with this stuff. Really awesome. Mm. Wow. So good. So good. Mm. Wow. That is a really good whiskey, I gotta say. I should have bought like six bottles of this. It was like 10 bucks. Oh, I didn't even know. Heaven Hill makes this as well. Man, Heaven Hill's just killing it tonight on my live stream. Between this and the, uh, the bottle and bond, really good stuff. I'm telling you, uh, you know, Buffalo Trace was probably my uh, favorite, um, favorite distillery for a little while. And then once Jim Beam started coming out with their uh, their amazing Booker's products, which I just fell in love with, I love Booker's bourbon. Um, but then Heaven Hill kind of punched back with their Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, which is just insanely delicious. Um, I haven't had too much luck with the Brown Foreman stuff. Uh, I do enjoy the the Old Forester 1920. is just one of the most delicious bourbons. I, I mean, I love that stuff. It's so good. But um, well, the other one, I mean, the Bottle and Bond is pretty good too on the Whiskey Row series. But the uh, but some of the other stuff that I've tried, uh, just I don't know. I mean, it just doesn't. It has uh, an aftertaste, and I can just kind of always tell when it's brown forming. Uh, Scott, you hit the money load. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Dwayne, Heaven Hill makes some great whiskey for the money. They really do. They really do. Because um, what I've seen some stuff that are that's such high and proof and what they ask for it. Um, so today I, I just picked up the the um, Woodford Reserve batch proof, and the only reason why I bought it is because I was in a excuse me. It's uh, the corn whiskey is coming back up on me. <laughs> Uh, the only reason why I bought it is because I had it. I had it at a tasting, and um, even though I'm not super crazy about Woodford Reserve, that stuff was really good to me. Uh, it just took all the Woodford Reserve flavors that in the double oaked that I kind of like, and really just kind of put it over the edge. So I grabbed the bottle of it, but you know it was pricey, um, and the fact that you can get the barrel proof for about fifty bucks from uh, for Elijah Craig. And now I think it even has more depth of flavor to it. You know, kudos to Heaven Hill. I mean, the stuff that they're making is just, it's, it's delicious. Um, Peter White, how about Old Ezra 101, seven year, Luxo, but ancient. So Old Ezra, um, I had a really, this is a really cool story. So, so Old Ezra was given to me completely blind by somebody. And um, I honestly thought, at the time that it was uh, Wild Turkey uh, 101, um, and I was obviously way off. Um, but at that time, I was just kind of starting to get into uh, bourbon. Um, but so actually not too long ago, I went back to the old Ezra, and I tried it again um, after now that my palate has kind of been accustomed to a lot of different bourbons. Um, you know, and I, I pretty enjoy, I enjoyed it. It wasn't bad at all. Um, that's the amazing thing about bourbon. There's so much good stuff that's considered bottom shelf bourbon. Um, you know, it's amazing. It's, um, you know, stuff like this and stuff like this and even this guy. I mean, all this stuff is under $20 and they're so enjoyable to drink. And you can drink a meat, you can drink them with the ice, whatever, however you like it. And it still holds up. It's, it's, it's delicious. 
Um, Richard Blanc, let's see. Old Farson, 1920 would be my next bourbon. Yes, definitely should be your next bourbon. Um, I'm getting kind of sad because uh, here's my Old Farson 1920, and I've been sipping on it. It's getting low. I'm going to have to get another one soon because I can't live without this stuff. Um, so let's see. Uh, what else do we have here? Grab the Four Roses Small Bash today. I've only tried the single barrel. It's great. Um, yeah, Pressman, Four Roses, that's another, that's a, just another distillery that just makes really amazing, uh, really amazing bourbon. Their small batch is great, but I think, I don't know, you might be disappointed when you come down from the single barrel, because the single barrel has that proof, and it's just so good. The small batch is definitely a little bit more floral to me, um, but all the Four Roses stuff is just so good. I'm going back in with some more corn whiskey. It's delicious. Mmm. Man, that mellow corn's good. What the hell, dude? Don't give me more of that stuff. <laughs> I should have bought more. Actually, the store I was in when I saw this only had one bottle left. I snagged the last one. So it shows you how popular it is, even in Kentucky. So good. Um, yeah, the Four Roses store picks. So... The amazing thing about Four Roses, as you guys know, they use so many different um, yeast strains to create their flavor profiles. Um, and Brent Elliott, the master distiller there, he does he does this crazy alchemy, like Harry Potter wizard shit to kind of put it all together. Uh, it's pretty cool, uh, especially for the special editions that he does and the, uh, the, the anniversary editions and the full proofs that he does, the limited editions. Um, I mean, it's really interesting how they have all these yeast strains and all these different, uh, all the different store picks kind of go into those yeast strains. And so each store pick, if you find, um, I enjoy personally the OBSVs and the OBSK, which are my favorite too. Um, what other ones have you guys had? Um, yeah, candy corn. Yeah, Scott, you're talking about the, uh, the mellow corn? Because it is, it's like candy corn. It's crazy. Mm. I could definitely sip on that for a while. Um, yeah, Richard, the Four Roses Barrel Proof. I got a chance to taste that, uh, taste that once, and it was amazing. So good. It's everything you love about Four Roses, and it's just amped up to the you know upteenth degree. It's delicious. Um, you know, obviously, it's always hard to find. You know, I think. I think they're releasing their next one, I think, uh, next month in September, the limited edition um, Four Roses ones, the uh, the Bow Proofs. I'm going to definitely try to get my hands on it. Um, that would be great. But the Four Roses Bow Proof would be pretty amazing. Um, all right, so let's see. It's uh, 9.38. I've been on the air for about 38 minutes. Uh, well, I was slated for about 45 minutes, so... Before I go, let's do a little Q&A. Why don't you send in your questions, guys, and anything you want to ask, you know, go, go, uh, go crazy. Um, let's see. Press man, OBSV store pick barrel strength was great. Yeah, the OBSV is one of my favorite, uh, I guess, the yeast strings they use. It's delicious. Um, Peter, why I have the single barrel 125th, about half a bottle left. The Elliott Select, both are amazing. I had the Elliott Select from uh, last year, not the 2016. Um, amazing whiskey. Um, the, I have a buddy of mine that has a uh, has the 50th anniversary bottle signed by Al Young, um, which is like, you know, it's like Holy Grail type uh, type bourbon. But he didn't, you know, obviously he wasn't going to open it. Apparently he had it at the distillery when he got it, but that's why he bought it. But now he just. Uh, He's holding on to that one. I have a feeling he's going to try to sell it. Um, let's see. Store picks for OESK and OESF. Yeah. OESF is uh, actually pretty good, too. Um, I believe the OBSV is the higher rye one. The OESF, I can't remember what the, uh, the recipe is on that. But the OESK is, I feel like anything with a K in it, I tend to enjoy more. <laughs> so that's always good. Um, love the four is a small batch. They are so good. Um, yeah, the, 
the small batches are just a great bottle. I mean, I have one back here too. Um, let's see, it's somewhere back there. Here's the. Uh, Is the Four Roses uh, single barrel. Um, so I don't know if you guys, when you go shopping, this um, LE, this warehouse number, LE barrel number 783E3U, uh, this particular bottle, this barrel, whatever this came from, um, was delicious. I bought one of them, and then as soon as I tried it, I went out and bought a couple more bottles because um, this particular single barrel was really really exceptional to me so if you guys see this one le 78-3u grab it it's really really good <clears throat> um peter Watt, i have an obsk 10 8 year yep high ride yeah yeah that's i love the high the, those obsks are i haven't had one that i haven't liked yet they are so good as soon as I see a, a store pick that has one of those, I grab it as soon as I can. It's really, really good. Um, but yeah, the Four Roses is just amazing, amazing bourbon. You know, they, they definitely know how to do their stuff right. Um, so let's see here, 941. I have time to do one more bottle. So let's see here, uh, here we go. I see a Knob Creek single barrel right behind you. Have you tried the cast strength Knob Creek rye? Press man, no, I have not yet. Um, uh, I do have a bottle of it. I uh, it's upstairs. Unfortunately, I do have a bottle of it. I haven't opened it yet. I was planning on doing that for one of my reviews uh, when I get a chance. Um, but I do love the single barrel uh, rye, so I grabbed that one. That's another. I think they're all picks. Um, that one was pretty good. The one I have right there, right where my thumb is. That one's really good. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, I haven't had the the uh, cast strength rye. Unfortunately, I heard really good things about it. I heard it's really uh, it's it's really hot and spicy, which makes sense. I mean, you're gonna have a rye that high of proof. It's it's gonna be coming in pretty hot. So, um, it's uh, it's definitely on my to do list. Um, let's see here. Um, so I think what I'll do is I'll go through some early times with you guys. Um, cause I love this, uh, this bottle and bond. This will be my last bottle real quick. I'll have a little try of this. I'll give you guys some of my notes that I get from the early times. Uh, like I said, this is going to be in my bottled and bond, um, uh, mashup is what I'm calling it, <laughs> you know? So, uh, take care, Richard. Have a good night. Thanks for, thanks for checking in. I appreciate it, man. Uh, Peter, why? Why does the Knob Creek cast strength rye not say Kentucky straight? Uh, Peter, I don't know. That's uh, that's a good question. Um, for uh, a straight rye, I mean, I know it's got to be it's got to be aged a certain amount of years, but you know, I hate to give this answer, but it's probably just a marketing thing. You know, the kind of the Knob Creek cast strength. Uh, limited edition, you know, you probably just, you know, somewhere straight doesn't fit in that equation. So <laughs> that's what I think it is. All right, so guys, the uh, the early times, real quick. So this one is it, it is alcohol forward, but it's also fruit forward. I mean, this is this is a cherry bomb to me. I mean, it's a lot of cherry on the nose. If you like cherry, chocolate kind of uh, nosed uh, or nosed bourbons, then definitely go out and try the early times. Yeah, it's just, I love early times. It just has such a, it has such a good, good flavor profile. It's so different than the sweetness and the caramel and vanilla of the, the E.H. Taylor and even the McKenna, which I think is very uh, oak forward. Um, this one is definitely more cherry, so I'm really, I'm really uh, looking forward to the uh, to the taste test where I'm gonna get it to try all these kind of lined up. Uh, let's see, my bourbon drink. So Scott, what else? So what? The ones you've tried tonight, what's been your favorite? Oh, let's see. I think I have to go with this guy, the Heaven Hill Bottled and Bond. Really, honestly, um, the old Bardstown was great. 
Um, but definitely a little bit more fruity uh, to me. Um, it was very enjoyable, but on the sweeter side. This one, though, was everything I love in a bourbon. Caramel, vanilla, nuttiness, corn, oak, cinnamon, clove, a long finish. I mean, all those stuff that makes a bourbon so enjoyable. Um, this was my uh, this was my surprise of the evening. Uh, didn't expect to try this, but I was glad to open it with you guys. This was absolutely delicious. It, I mean, it is sweet. It is candy corn, but it is a very enjoyable uh, whiskey. It's um, it's got the the heat to it, long finish. I really enjoyed this stuff, but overall, this this I had to go with this. This was so good. Uh, let's see. I press uh, Richard Blancas, OGD one one four. Good call, man. Good call. I have a bottle right here. I love this stuff. I keep hearing rumors that it's going away. I'm not sure if it is. If you see it, grab it. It is so good. I love this stuff. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Peter White, the bottle and bond is non-existent here as well. Yeah, Peter, um, you can only buy this in Kentucky. Well, at least that's what I've been told. It's nowhere else except in Kentucky. And they have this by the boatloads in Kentucky. You can go in and buy, buy 10 bottles if you want. I bought four bottles uh, just to have. So, um, And I'm glad I did because it's really, really good. This will be – it sucks because this could be my everyday sipper, but I know I can't get this all the time, so I have to really savor it. Um, so good. So again, guys, the early times, um, chocolate-covered cherries. That's what's in this glass. 100 proof, good finish. It finishes with oak, a little bit of nuttiness. But on the front, it is chocolate-covered cherries. Um, not unlike the Old Forester 1920. The Old Forester, though, was just amped up to another level. That's amazing. But this is... For 20 bucks, you get kind of a slight hint of that. So if you really like that flavor profile, then if you see early times, go for it. For like $20, $22, you can't go wrong. Um, yes, yeah, Scott, the new Riff. I cannot wait for that to hit Ohio. I can't wait to get my hands on that stuff. Uh, it's supposed to hit in September. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, uh, the kind of the connections that I've made uh, here in Ohio, they're definitely keeping an eye out for it and let me know when it comes in. So I can't wait. Uh, Prussman, I hear Cherry. I always think Stag Jr. Yes. So the Stag Jr. though, you know, for me, there is Cherry there, and I totally under and I get that uh, in Stag, uh, Stag Jr. But the Stag Jr. finish is just long, and um, <laughs> um, I feel like you get you get that really deep flavor of oak and caramel on it, um, a lot of alcohol. Um, I love Stag Jr. Um, I got the newest batch. Um, it's up there somewhere. Oh, here it is. <clears throat> so, I mean, I love this stuff. It's so good. So this is, uh, this is 126.4 proof, this guy. Um, I had this at a uh, at a bar when I was up in um, in Colorado, and uh, as soon as I I was able to get my hands on this there, you can't buy it, you can't find it here in Ohio, unfortunately. But it's so good. Um, but I agree, it's it's cherry chocolate covered cherry all day. Um, Dwayne, I bought some Heaven Hill bottle and bond here in Indiana. Oh, that's right, Dwayne, you found it in Indiana. Well, that's interesting because I've always. Just told me that it's available in Kentucky, but if it's in Indiana, well, Indiana is kind of the same distance for me. It's either two hours one way or two hours the other. So uh, that's that's awesome. I'm glad you can get it. It is so delicious. Um, Peter, seventeen ninety two foolproof is a cherry bomb as well. Well, we're gonna find out because uh, I'm definitely planning on uh, doing a, a review of that um, really soon. That'll probably be my next review after I do the uh, after I do my mashup fight with all my bottles and bonds. Uh, I've never spotted foolproof, sadly. Yeah, press man. I obviously have to go to Kentucky to get it. Uh, it's it's kind of hard to find. Even the even the 1792 bottled and bond was a little bit hard to find for me. Um, I had to. I went to Indiana and actually found it. Um, but I had to go to about two or three different stores to find it. 
Um, uh, yeah, okay, Dwayne, in the area. Yeah, well, I mean, just the fact that you get it in Indy, that's pretty cool. I only thought it was available in Kentucky, so, um, but as soon as I saw it, I grabbed it. But if you guys, I guess, are ever in Kentucky or now the Indy area, definitely, definitely, definitely get this stuff. It is so good and so cheap that it'll, I mean, this could be your everyday sipper, hands down, very, very easily. So, um, we're almost here an hour, guys. So, uh, I guess with that, we're going to start wrapping things up here. I really appreciate you guys coming on um, and chatting with me. This, was, uh, this has been awesome. Um, I'm going to try to do this uh, probably once a week. I know uh, me and Scott from My Bourbon Journey, we uh, plan on doing something maybe biweekly together to talk about some, uh, some, you know, what's going on in the world of bourbon and maybe some new things that we've tried. So, that'll be great. Um, oh, Scott here, uh, just got the 1792 Sweet Wheat. I'll be reviewing that soon. I'm so happy you got that, Scott, because uh, I was wondering about that one. Um, I've heard really good things about the Sweet Wheat, so I'm really curious what you think about that one. Uh, Peter White, I got two bottles of the Foolproof in Ontario. Well, bully for you, buddy. That's awesome. Um, so, Peter, when, uh, when I do my review of the 1792, I definitely want to hear in your comments if, uh, if I had the same uh, notes as you. You said cherry bomb, so I'm really going to be looking for cherry now. Um, so that will be really interesting. Uh, that's awesome. Um, yeah, you can't get the foolproof here in Ohio. The only one they have here is a small batch, which I have, which, you know, it's, it's just a good, a good everyday bourbon. It's, you know, nothing that blows your way, but you know, it's, it's, it's pretty good. Um, definitely, um, fruit forward to me on the, uh, 1792, just the regular, um, small batch. Um, it had a decent finish to me, which I really liked. Uh, um, let's see, um, Peter, I will have a pour with you. Yeah, that'd be great, man. Yeah. Um, Scott, I need to find the foolproof too. Yeah, Scott, if, uh, if I get back to Kentucky, I'm planning on going back uh, next month in September. I'll, uh, I'll grab you a bottle. <laughs> it's, uh, I mean, for 50 bucks, you know, for a foolproof, that's, that's pretty damn good. And it's a pick. So hopefully, uh, hopefully the picks are, they had, you know, they had good, um, <laughs> they were able to pick uh, very well there. Um, let's see. So, all right, guys. So, like I said, um, I will be doing that uh, that mashup with those four bottle and bond bourbons. Please watch and hope you guys enjoy it. Um, plan on doing some. Uh, I have to do some fancy camera work. Um, I'm still kind of working on my uh, some of my equipment to try to do more and more engaging uh, things uh, for you guys. Um, trying to help you and uh, pick out better bourbons and save some money and also you know enjoy better bourbon. So. I'm also going to be doing a, uh, a Weller Wednesday one of these days. Uh, I'm going to be doing the Special Reserve, the 107, um, and I have a small, small sample of the Weller 12, which I'm trying to get a full bottle of. But I'll be doing all three of those uh, together, um, so that would be great. Um, so take care. Uh, I'm glad you guys joined, and I appreciate it. And um, as I always say, uh, because of you guys, uh, it's not always the whiskey, it's the people you share with, including you guys. So thanks, cheers, and have a good night, guys.